WordPress Core includes a set of functions and hooks that control certain aspects of the network, or individual sites on the network. In this lesson, you'll learn about multi-site specific function naming conventions to be aware of, and then dive into some useful multi-site specific functions and hooks you can use. Finally, you'll learn about developing for individual sites on the network, as well as where to go for more information about multi-site functions and hooks. There are a couple of different naming conventions used in the WordPress codebase when it comes to multi-site. WordPress multi-site was originally known as WordPress MU or WordPress multi-user, and many multi-site related functions and hooks still use the WPMU prefix. Additionally, some functions are named based on the old terminology, which describe multiple blogs on a site. This has since been updated to describe multiple sites on a network instead, but some old terminology still lives on in some function names. When you're developing a product to support a multi-site network, there are some useful internal functions worth knowing about. The first is the isMultiSite function. This function will return true if multi-site is enabled, and is probably the most widely used function related to multi-site. If you do a search through the WordPress codebase for all the users of the isMultiSite function, you'll see that it's used in a number of places to either perform specific tasks in the context of a multi-site network or to restrict functionality only to multi-site networks. There are also some common functions that are useful when developing administration interfaces for the multi-site network. IsSuperAdmin can be used to check if the currently logged in user is a network administrator on the network. IsNetworkAdmin is the multi-site equivalent of the IsAdmin function and determines whether the current request is for the network administrative interface. NetworkAdminURL is the multi-site equivalent of the admin URL function and allows you to create URLs relative to the admin area of the network. This is useful for redirecting to different areas of the network admin dashboard. When working with site content, there are some functions that are widely used. IsMainSite determines whether the current site is the main site of the network or not. Next, there is the GetSites function, which will return a list of sites matching requested arguments. Then there is the switch to blog function, which allows you to switch to a different site on the network. Restore current blog, which restores the current site after you switch to a different site. And get current blog ID, which returns the ID of the current site. Using these functions, you can perform actions across the network. For example, let's say you wanted to create a function that updated an option on a specific site on the network. Here, you're using the switch to blog function to switch to that site by its ID, then using the update option function to update the option by name, passing in the value, and then finally restoring to the current site on the network. However, if you wanted to extend that to update the same option across all sites, you could use the getSites function and loop through all the sites on the network. So we could start by removing the site ID parameter. Then get a list of sites using the get sites function. And then loop through all the sites in a for each loop. We can move this code into the loop and update the site by the blog ID property on the site object. You could also use the update blog option function to update an option on a specific site without having to switch to that site. So instead of doing the switching, we can use update blog option and we pass it in the site ID and the option name and value.
When developing multi-site plugins, there is the isNetworkOnly plugin function. This is a plugin-specific function that checks for the network true value in the plugin header to see if this should be activated only as a network-wide plugin. This is useful if you want to restrict a plugin to only be activated on the network and not on individual sites. There are also a couple of useful hooks that you can use when developing for multi-site. The first is the network admin menu hook, which allows you to add a menu item to the network admin dashboard. The second is the network admin notices hook, which allows you to add notices to the network admin dashboard. This is the multi-site equivalent of the admin notices hook that is used for single site notices. The sign up blog form filter is a filter that allows you to modify the sign up form for new sites. You can use this to add additional fields to the sign up form. Finally, WP initialize site is an action that is fired when a new site is created on the network. This is useful if you want to perform actions when a new site is created. For example, if you wanted to assign a custom top level domain to a new single site. When you are rendering any content in the scope of a single site on the network, WordPress core is clever enough to know that you're working inside the scope of that site. This means that any functions that you use to retrieve information, such as get blog info, get option, get posts, or get post meta, and any function that you might use to add or update information, like update option, WP insert post, or update post meta, will get add or update the correct tables for the site that you are currently working with. Additionally, if you use functions like register post type or register taxonomy, these will be registered for the current site only. For a full list of all WordPress multi-site related functions and hooks, check out the multi-site package category in the WordPress developer reference.